Welcome back to Good Morning Trinidad and Tobago on CTV and Talk City 91.1 FM. So the crime situation in Trinidad and Tobago is undoubtedly bad. And many people have been calling on the government to do something to give them some sense of security. But did you know that there are many things that you can do to protect yourself, your business, and your workers? Yeah. So there is a conference coming up, a breakfast session, that will be hosted by the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber. To tell us more about that and what you can do to protect yourself is Mr. Paul Daniel Nahus, Director and Chief Training Officer of uh, Blue Line Defense Training and Consultant Limited. Good morning, Paul, Daniel, sir. How Please are you? I'm all right, I'm all right. So what can you do under the law to protect yourself? The Chamber is having a breakfast mm -hmm. meeting to discuss some of these things, and you would be one of the feature speakers. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> the thing about it is that you have to, is bet prevention is better than cure. But sometimes, especially in times like this, you can't always prevent. And that's one of the topics that I'll be covering in this breakfast session. <laughs> you see, you can take all these measures to safeguard yourself, which it you should take, and it will lessen your risk. But um, what, what a lot of people will come into, all right, so cameras with these things. Cameras now, uh, a lot of people don't realize, don't work as a deterrent anymore. Those days are over. Cameras now are an important investigative tool finding people but it's it's not a deterrent anymore um you know people put security guards you can put cages you can put these things that will deter however something can still happen you know we're seeing videos popping up all over especially on facebook now that people yeah. are, are sending out there you know people will be in in cages securing themselves as cashiers and so on they'll still be robbed so you have to have a plan for prevention of the robbery during and aftermath and the aftermath is not um, <laughs> is not something that people are focusing on enough in terms of trauma. Your employees will be traumatized after a robbery. There'll be some level of trauma, even if they feel okay at um, the moment after. It's going to affect their work pattern. It's going to affect their productivity. It's going to affect your business reputation as well. So there's the public relations aspect. What are you doing to better secure your business for your employees, for your customers, and at any day for yourself as well who runs your business? So um, what I'm trying to do in in this talk tomorrow in the chamber is cover all those aspects. What can you do to deter criminal activity um, from reaching your business? What to do in the event of it? And how to deal with the best deal with the aftermath of it? So for somebody listening and who may not be able to make it to that breakfast session tomorrow, you had one thing to tell them to prevent crime or prevent themselves from uh, being a victim of crime. What would that be? Um, if I had one thing to tell them, I would say, um, not in terms of a business place, not to resist. Not to resist. In that the criminals now are very different than 10, even 10 years ago. I was going to say 20 or 30 years ago, but even 10 years ago. <laughs> because of the amount of arms and ammunition we have in Trinidad, they are, they, everyone has a gun now. All the bandits have, a gun, have guns. They are shooting. It's not like before where, you see, you see before it was difficult to get illegal ammunition, or, or more difficult than now, I should say. It was a lot more difficult. So. They had to conserve the ammunition. They had to, if you want to say, use it a little more wisely. Now, because of the illegal ammunition flooding the streets, they're just shooting. If you notice, um, now they just they'll just spray down someone with bullets. Before, yes, it would happen, but it wouldn't happen as often. The murder rate has gone up. Um, the killings now are more brazen. The younger generation now is more boldface and more brazen in their robberies. So, if somebody comes to rob your place of, of work. The best thing to do is have your employees trained, not to resist them in terms of you, you don't want your employee to put themselves in harm's way or to aggravate the situation. Uh, the one thing I am concerned with now is the kind of bad mind attitude that the bandits have in terms of if you don't resist, some of them will still shoot you, they'll still do these things. So that is a growing concern right now that needs to be dealt with. And, and it is something that people are concerned about as well. So how do we deal with that is, is probably one of the main questions. There's, there's a, there's a, as I said, there's a plan to have for prevention. There's a plan to have during, and there's a plan for afterwards. And it's important, too, for em, any employers that may be watching to have that plan done properly and by professionals, and also, too, to train your staff. When I say train, you have to run drills with your staff. You have to properly inform them. You can't just bring them into a meeting. Okay, if somebody comes to robbery place, do X, Y, and Z, and that's it. And say, all right, well, if something happens, <laughs> expect them to do X, Y, and Z without training fit, without doing drills fit. Imagine if um, we had a, a, a military that you just, okay, this is how you shoot, this is how you drill. We talk to you about it. Maybe practice it once. Okay, go go out there and and do your duty. It's not going to happen. 
And, and these are some of the things that the chamber will be discussing with you and Mr. Brian Ramsey. Mr. Ramsey will be um, discussing CCTV. That is, um, he, he is the expert in that, in terms of the monitoring and all that. Um, I know the other side of it very well. I don't know the cameras nearly as well as he yeah, does. Yeah. And he, he's going to go into that and the importance of that. And you also to teach people uh, self-defense and, and that kind I of thing? I have self-protection programs that are on a blue line. Um, that one, I always, always use the term self-protection because the way I structure my programs for self-defense, if you want to term it that way, is awareness and situational training and then into the more self-defense physical aspect. Because the first thing you need to do is try to avoid the situation, um, try to look for signs to be aware of your surroundings. And as the danger gets closer, um, gets more imminent, then there's the window to escape or the window for your safety becomes smaller. So in that, I do teach the theory and do awareness training. And then after the awareness training, we go on to the physical self-defense. People like the physical self-defense because it empowers you. You know, you learn these techniques in a controlled environment, you feel empowered by it. But that's actually very dangerous to teach on its own because you teach that and you give someone a false sense of security that they can take on an armed assailant. And these guys are not going to hold back back they're not going to pull their punches and they're going to be using deadly weapons in, in most situations so while you need to know that to be able to defend yourself should that time come the most important thing is first of all the awareness and situational training so it is not just about you fighting back as you say uh, actually don't fight back in some cases best, you just if wait you, and if you can avoid it the best thing to do is to, to avoid to, to raise an alarm and the fighting is always a last resort <laughs> i mean i've done martial arts for over 10 years now and Still, I mean, I mean, it gives you a sense of calm in one way, but on the, on the other hand, just best to avoid a fight. There are too many variables. Anything could happen. You know, nobody's invincible. And uh, the fellas, oh, they're different now, right? They, they will take your life just like that. They, they really don't care. They don't, yeah. have the and they don't have any value for their life. Imagine what value they have for your life. Because, you know, somebody has a gun and you have your two arms and two feet and you're going to try to kick and cough and, and, and pull it, out it, a gun and, and that's it. And it works out so nice and so well when you do and so perfectly when you see instructors do it and you do it in a, a, a room, you do it in a controlled environment. It always looks nice. It always comes across very nice. The reality of people who have been in situations where they were assaulted with someone with a gun, um, those who have been trained for combat and so on will, will tell you much differently in terms of how perfectly everything <laughs> plays out. Yeah. And, and this workshop would include, uh, just to give the viewers an idea, creating and implementing a business security plan, mm -hmm. awareness training and drills, a uh, hostage victim and training drill as well. Yeah, because uh, that, that is so very important, not just because of my background in terms of training for counterterrorism and so on, and cases like that. Um, but we had a case, was last year, I believe it was, where a school child was held hostage mm -hmm. held with a gun to the head. And, you know, it, it's too easy for the situation to happen. The robbery, I think, two years ago at 251 Degrees Nightclub, mm -hmm. when they went down into Tong Restaurant. Yeah. And I mean, I was watching and following the whole thing that day, and I was saying that, you know, if there were people inside of Tong Restaurant and he ran down there, or it would have been an entirely different scenario. He was there alone. Um, but if there, was, there were people there, it would have been this. If we put a gun to someone's head, the entire dynamic would have changed. And it can so easily change because in panic and opportunity, that's what it may, may come to. So, you know, I'm not saying that anyone I'm training to be a hostage negotiator, yeah. but, you know, there are these things you have to know to keep yourself safe in a hostage situation. Yeah. And a lot of times we don't really see it so much happening in Trinidad, but you hear about it if you look at uh, news channels, international news yeah. channels, you'll see it happening in other countries. Is it something that we need to be... We need to prepare for. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it this way too. We always say, well, it, it, it don't happen here, or, you know, this the training, kind of, you know we training. don't have to be worried Even, too even much. past that, the practical aspect, look at this. Trail has 1.3 million people, mm -hmm. according to census. Some say it's 1.5, whatever it is. We are small in terms of public administration, or what it, what it deem it as in public admin, is that we are a small state. We have 1.3 million people. We've had, maybe last year was one hostage situation or two, mm -hmm. one, and it wasn't major, thank God. But mm -hmm. multiply that now by... 100 million people, 200 million people. You know, it, it's, it's statistically, so it really, yeah, statistically something yeah. more will happen, you know, that the chances of it happening ha are increasing with the population size and all of that. So the important thing is to actually teach people and let them understand how to work. But, but I'll ask, ask you this. When somebody kidnaps someone, mm -hmm. is that not in some instances or in some way someone kidnaps a, a loved one of yours, you have no idea what they're doing to them, you have no idea what's going on with them, and then 
You don't know if you're dead or alive, what condition they're in, and they call and they ask you for money and extorting you. Is that not a hostage situation in some sense? Is that not a terrorist action in some sense? Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. we have to look at it in a, in a broader sense like that, that, you know, things like kidnappings, and so it, we have to extend what we consider a, a serious or crucial situation, and we have to be more jarred by this. I don't think we're jarred enough when we hear about a kidnapping, you know, the, the generic comments come, all kidnappings come back. Also, we don't take it seriously enough, I don't think, and I'm not um, knocking anyone in the anti-kidnapping squad, I'm not knocking the police or anything for that, but what I'm just saying is that we as a society are not taking things serious enough. Nobody is going to think to put in, or a few people are going to think to put in a plan, because I do consult in fit for putting these plans in place, and they're not going to think to do it until they get robbed, until you know, something happens. Does somebody have to get shot in your workplace? in a robbery, God forbid, you know, for you to actually take action and be proactive. But we like to be reactive in this society, unfortunately. And that is something that we need to address. And you can do that through education. Of course, and that sh it should be done um, through institutes. They, they, and I, I think we are, we are coming to the time where in primary and secondary school levels, we need to start introducing in, in, diff in certain classes um, safety and awareness training. And so I, th I think it's important now, especially for, you see how many, how many instances they have of school children being stabbed in the mm -hmm. last, what, six months? How many, how many school children were stabbed? And by classmates, by children their age. So before we, we go, I want to find out more about this conference, this breakfast session. Where is it taking place? The Chamber of Commerce. What time? Um, I believe it starts at 9 a.m. And so what, about 12? The it's scheduled to start at 9 and at 12. Yeah. And it is for business people and people who... Members of, supposed to be members of the Chamber of Commerce. And what I was told was that there'll be um, mostly the small and medium business owners um, that they'll be attending, you know, to try and gain what benefit they, they can out of it. Um, the Chamber of Commerce does provide these different sessions and different things for members, uh, members and, uh, you know, to, to help improve their business and to, to help build these small and medium businesses into something, into something bigger if they so desire. Mr. Daniel Nahus, I would like to thank you for coming in and talking with us about uh, this breakfast session, which will be hosted by the Chamber. Um, and hopefully we can chat with you again as it relates to some plans for educating people and giving them more information about how yes. they can protect themselves. Oh, you know to find me. <laughs> yes, so thank you very much, Mr. Paul Daniel Nahus. This is Good Morning Trinidad and Tobago. We take a break and come back with more.